several tropical systems brewing across the world on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 17th. Well, it absolutely is a wide world of tropics tonight because we've got no less than, I think, five basins that are promising potential activity. But the only active system is no longer a tropical cyclone. Sean uh, died off a little while ago now and is a remnant low in the Atlantic, not far from the Lesser Antilles. Day 139, hurricane season in the Atlantic. We do have Sean, of course, what's left of it, and an area of interest behind it, 70% chance. Very interesting to see that because the GFS uh, certainly wants it to form. The European model has nothing now. So really fascinating to see what will happen there. Day 155 in the Eastern Pacific, 90% for a system that may almost already be a tropical cyclone now near the coast of Mexico, and a 60% now for the area behind it, to the east which will only start forming in a couple of days. Western Pacific we've now got 80% for another system that could actually be close to developing as well now into a tropical depression near Vietnam and a 30% for a system way out at sea there that will form in the lower latitudes. And in the Indian Ocean, North Indian, we have two systems here as well. One with a very high chance, 80% in the Arabian Sea. That looks like it's going to form. And a 30% in the Bay of Bengal, which still could form, but we're still not fully sure on that just yet. And if that wasn't enough as a surprise, well, the Southern Hemisphere. 30% area of interest now in the South Pacific, which could he end up heading towards Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands. That would be a very early season system if it does form over there. Let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery since we've got no storms to home in on tonight. So let's take a look first at the Invest 94L in the Atlantic. Well there it is, it's not looking so good right now it has to be said. Uh, signs yesterday or the day before that it could have been developing a centre of circulation. Well it doesn't look very forthcoming there it has to be said. And convection is very much disorganised, far uh, spread far and wide there across the whole region there. And uh, it is clear that this system would struggle if it did form for the next few days. So keep watching it. Uh, look at this Western Pacific system. That looks like it is nearly a tropical depression, if not possibly one already as we look at this satellite imagery. Blowing up nice amounts of convection there, copious even, uh, mainly on the western side. Um, some of that higher cloud cover showing that there might still be a, a disjointedness in the system's structure. Uh, so can't be fully sure whether that is actually a cyclone yet. Radar not fully conclusive either. There is obviously strong rotation there and decent amounts of rain falling over Vietnam already, but can't be too conclusive on that just yet. Well, here's the Eastern Pacific system, the high chance, and you can see here as well, also looking very good, uh, blowing up convection over the center now, and the real question here is whether it has a center of circulation, whether the rotation is strong enough there to classify, uh, but it does look like that we may see two tropical cyclones at least uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours out of those two. Sea surface temperatures then in the eastern Pacific look fairly warm. A little cool spot there where Lydia used to be a long time ago now. Off the coast of Mexico though, generally those sea surface temperatures are warm. In the Atlantic, it's pushing still above 30 degrees over large parts of the Caribbean and the western part of the main development region where Sean is and where this invest could track, and near the Bahamas as well. The southern part of the Gulf of Mexico is still boiling hot, but cooling down quite substantially now in the northern side and along the immediate coast of the US East Coast. The uh, Western Pacific also looking good though in the Philippine Sea particularly, especially off the coast of the Visayas in the Philippines above 30 degrees Celsius and through the Japanese islands, the southern Ryukyus that is, looking good there as well. Temperatures in the subtropics and further north are starting to cool off. Uh, Indian Ocean, North Indian, uh, Bay of Bengal I should say, above 30 degrees over a large part of that basin and the Arabian Sea looking decent, 28 degrees generally, a few slightly cooler spots though. 
and the Southwest Indian Ocean starting to get its game on now as well. Uh, 26 degrees Celsius waters expanding in the Mozambique Channel. Off the coast of Australia, Western Australia still looking very good there. The South Pacific, of course, we're looking at potential system near the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. Uh, warm temperatures there right now, over 30 degrees in the lower latitudes, but they cool off quite quickly as you go through Vanuatu. Compared to average, it's above average in large parts of the North Indian Ocean, but a significant cool uh, trail there near Indonesia. Uh, the Western Pacific, mostly above average, uh, a Balaban cool trail there as well as the Koinu cool trail. Eastern Pacific, Lydia cool trail there as well, but generally well above average in the same case there for the Atlantic as well, particularly further west. Oceanic heat content is still very high indeed, a huge amount of energy in the Caribbean Sea and through the Bahamas and along the east coast of Florida. In the eastern Pacific it's starting to run a little bit dry there now but still a few warm spots there, high energy spots off the coast of Mexico. Western Pacific looking okay, a few cooler spots now there as well but still very hot off the Philippines and also east of the Marianas. Well, let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days. And once again, the caveat to Invest 94L is that the ECMWF is currently forecasting nothing now out of this. But the GFS couldn't be further from the truth or further from that uh, forecast. And it is going for a Category 1 hurricane instead there within that five-day period, forming quite quickly uh, within the next uh, tw uh, 48 to 72 hours and becoming a hurricane there by 96 six hours. In the eastern Pacific then, uh, watching for these potential two systems, the first one develops quite easily and quickly there and becomes another hurricane, Lydia vibes that may be a little bit there and really strengthens actually and then turns towards the northwest towards the Baja California Peninsula, that track could still change a lot and the other system not as clear cut, uh, other models possibly having a little bit more of a stronger case for it, GFS only barely makes it a tropical cyclone but it is one there on that imagery. Uh, three systems visible in this image, that Western Pacific one first of all becoming a tropical storm, pretty straightforward but it does stall off the coast of Vietnam and dies off eventually, uh, but look towards the Arabian Sea, a storm forming there and one in the Bay of Bengal that forms quite late on and only gets towards moderate to maybe high end tropical storm status before making landfall probably near Chattagram. In the uh, Arabian Sea then looking at that storm, that looks like it's going to be the strongest of the three, uh, becoming a hurricane equivalent there by the end of day five. Looking at rainfall over the next seven days, the main area of concern is along the coast of Vietnam and that general Indochina region where there will be elevated rainfall totals for quite a large area, uh, large parts of Vietnam, uh, southern China implicated there as well and possibly even Hong Kong and Macau. Highest rainfall amounts forecasted at the moment on land, 12 inches there just along the coast not far from Haiphong and that is around 300 millimetres. Offshore it could reach 19 or 20 inches that is 500 millimeters and of course the deviation in the storm's track could make that a reality on land. Seven inches further south towards Da Nang as well in Vietnam uh, so high amounts there too that's uh, over three uh, what is that nearly 200 millimeters and 14 inches over 300 millimeters in Hainan. Checking the Atlantic in that longer range, the hurricane that the GFS develops does get some decent strength about it, but it's generally fairly small and it is harmless, hopefully, and stays fairly out to sea. Of course, uh, I say harmless, it could still cause rip current issues, but it does look like it gets to Category 2 or maybe even Category 3 there in that run. And what happens after that? A very large system filling in that void and could become a tropical cyclone in its own right. What a big mess that is. Well, in the eastern Pacific, that hurricane off the coast of Baja California uh, gets uncomfortably cl close and then swipes through the southern tip and then into the mainland Mexico region and then off towards the northeast, the remnants felt in Texas. So that might be a Category 2 landfall there, maybe. And then looking towards the east there as well, that other system, what's left of it, uh, traceable, just about reaching the coast near El Salvador, I think, and it starts to form right at the end. There it is, and into Oaxaca. 
in the North Indian Ocean. You can see these two cyclones and landfall there as mentioned in uh, might be Myanmar or Bangladesh and then look at the Arabian Sea storm getting quite powerful there category 3 maybe category 4 and then a landfall on the border between Gujarat India and Bangladesh uh, and that could be a substantial landfall uh, reminiscent of uh, another one that we had not too long ago I've forgotten it already um, but there was of course a substantial storm not too long ago and look at this the South Pacific GFS is well and truly on board with this one becoming quite a potent cyclone as it moves through the northern islands between Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands uh, becoming a hurricane equivalent storm and then sweeping southwestwards into the Coral Sea where it could go on to affect New Caledonia towards the end of that 10 day period there depicted here um, so substantial storm possibly on the cards still quite a distance out 30 percent scan the barcode and that will take you through to the force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request bespoke to your liking and are still waiting for hode t-shirt it's been four years in the waiting uh, but at least you can get a t-shirt if you can't get the real thing well then, the Western Pacific in the Silly Range has one, maybe two systems there. Um, certainly one mature typhoon that moves off towards the northeast, and it loses its way a little bit, and then it dies off, gets sucked into a very large extratropical cyclone. And as a matter of fact, that's really all there is in the super long range tonight. A uh, little footnote on the Atlantic system, very large system, sort of loses its structure and uh, intensity, uh, but it does possibly cause some gusty weather across the whole Cuba to Florida region. You can talk about all of that on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with members from all around the world. Well, it felt pretty breathless tonight. We had a lot to go through there. On this day, 13 years ago, would you believe, it was Typhoon Meggy and its extraordinary Category 5 peak. 185 miles per hour, 885 millibars, I think is still the official line. I can't remember what uh, our estimates are on that one. I think we may have put it slightly stronger. Uh, but Meggy was certainly a very ferocious Category 5 storm, which made landfall near its peak intensity in northern Luzon. I vaguely remember tracking that one. It was before I went into full-time storm tracking, uh, but certainly one that was absolutely an eye-opener. Well then, back to today, and the next name in the Atlantic hurricane season is Tammy. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Norma, and in the Central Pacific, it's Hone. I'm drawn to tell you about a model run that I saw a little while ago, probably a couple of days ago now in the Atlantic, that had in the Long Range 3 systems, which would take it to the, um, not Greek alphabet, the auxiliary list. Um, including that invest, which would mean the fourth one. Uh, the Western Pacific, the next name is Sanba, the North Indian Ocean. The next name there is Tej, and we could be seeing that fairly soon, as well as Sanba. In the Australian region, the next name is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and South Pacific. It could well be the turn of Lola on the way soon. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin, though. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>